2017, combined worldwide sales of cannabis products, legal and illegal, were over 200 billion a year. But where did it all begin? It goes back to Neolithic Japan, about 10,000 BC. Someone used it to start a fire, then realized it smelled kind of cool, and it chilled everyone out. Cool. For Japan, it was spiritual. In China, it was useful. Medicine, rope, soup, clothes from hemp, and weapons. Hemp bowstrings were more powerful. Perhaps it was the first time cannabis killed anyone. 2727 BC, Emperor Shenong, father of Chinese medicine, wrote the first fan letter to cannabis. He called it Ma. He died experimenting on himself. A thousand years later, Indians called it Bang. They smoked it. Egyptians drank it in tea. But inhaling was the preferred means of consumption worldwide. Mm. In 480 BC, Herodotus saw the Scythian tribe, said to be the most uncouth and savage in the Middle East, inhaling the vapors of hemp, both as a ritual and for their own pleasurable recreation. The first smoking pipes in Ethiopia around 1320 contained traces of cannabis. In 1545, the Spaniards put the ma into Manana and started growing huge tracts in Chile. It traveled north to Richmond, Virginia, growing on the shores of the Potomac, spreading to what is now Washington, D.C. 1619, law was every plantation in Virginia had to grow cannabis, known as Indian hemp, mainly for rope, but they smoked it as well. Pipe of peace. Perceptions of cannabis began to change. It was becoming a threat to the power elite. And Wash DC was the place America began to outlaw the drug, making it a prescription-only medicine in 1906. By the 1920s, laws were tightening, thanks to lobbying by the beer industry and Harry J. Anslinger, first head of the US Bureau of Narcotics. They called him Harry Party Pooper. In slave labor colonies like India, Brazil, and Singapore, cannabis was labeled the shirkers' drug. So high. Cocaine was promoted as the workers' drug, increasing stamina and concentration by as much as cannabis reduced it. Government-funded movie Reefer Madness showed how a single puff of weed drives men and women to wild psychosis. Cannabis regulation tightened and tightened. It was finally banned in 1937, in case it turned the nation's youth into communists. Narcotics Bureau boss Harry Anslinger sure boosted the profits of the brewers and the paper barons. By the 1950s, cannabis was heavily associated with jazz musicians. Then white people started visiting jazz clubs and the genie was out of the bottle. Perhaps that was the moment cannabis became a drug for rebels. It spread through the middle classes via the beatnik culture. That's groovy. World governments reacted in 1961 with a treaty to ban production and supply, except for medicinal and research purposes. <coughs> Conscripts returning from the Vietnam War as shell-shocked young men retreated to the hillsides of Northern California where they could smoke pot in peace and also grow it in peace. Some of them went psychotic. Whether a result of the war or the cannabis is hard to prove. In 1971, Richard Nixon combined the two when he coined the War on Drugs. It was a great excuse to tool up for a global war against a generation of super-rich dealers who are still with us. While the US was destroying cannabis crops, a new era was dawning. In 1976, the Dutch government decriminalized, which was great for dealers. Yay! Cannabis was legal to possess, but illegal to sell. Perfect. Huh. In 2001, Portugal adopted the Dutch policy. The same year, Canada became the first country to legalize medical marijuana. A dozen U.S. states followed, including California, and by 2015, Wash D.C. made it legal to use, but not to sell. That was good news for the guys with Uzis. By 2020, medical marijuana sales are forecast to be 17 billion a year in the USA alone, and illegal sales at about 40 billion. It's legal by then, which is also possible. 2015, Uruguay became the first country to legalize recreational marijuana. June 2018, cannabis-infused beverages are overtaking wine sales in Oregon. Americans rejoiced when the FDA approved Epidiolex for treating epilepsy. In the UK, sufferers begged for the same cannabinoids. October 2018, Canada legalized recreational use, joining nine US states and Washington, D.C. Looks like prohibition will turn out to be a temporary phenomenon. Researchers say there are many more medical benefits to uncover. It will be a trillion dollar industry, once it's legal everywhere to inhale the vapors.